Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here today to do the mid-year book freakout tag. Today it is July 8th and I'm going to talk to you about how my reading has gone so far this year. I have read a total of 68 books out of my goal of reading 100 books in 2022, so we're doing really, really well so far. And the first question that will kick it off is the best book that you've read in the year 2022. Probably my favorite book I've read this year is Oh Beautiful by Young Yoon, which I read towards the beginning of the year and was one that really took me by surprise how much I enjoyed it. I don't think it's for everyone and um, I, I wouldn't recommend it like widely to everyone but if you like books that really look into how so many different parts of your identity intersect I think it's a really really fascinating character study of this of a woman who is a journalist who is going back to basically the area that she grew up in the Dakotas she is investigating kind of this fracking town that has been created because of the boom in natural gas and how that community has really changed the kinds of things that are being said to her as an Asian woman and the kinds of things that are said to her as like an outsider I mentioned recently that I tried to read Young Yoon's other book, Shelter, and I didn't love it as much. I really enjoyed Oh Beautiful though. And then the other book that I really, really loved is Ain't Burnt All the Bright by Jason Reynolds and Jason Griffin. It's put together so well. It's very collage -y and uses this refrain that keeps being repeated over and over again. So the cadence of it, it's really poetic and evocative. It mostly follows a family as they are dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic and the Black Lives Matter movement after George Floyd's murder. It's a really, really quick book as well. Best sequel that I read so far in 2022, I've only read one sequel and that one was Surviving the City Volume 2. I really enjoyed this follow-up to the first book uh, in the Surviving the City series and this one focused on a few different characters who are still in that same community from the first volume and the ways that the people in the town who are um, more old timers have very specific ideas about tradition and gender and identity and these group of teens have a very different idea and are a lot more inclusive and open about how they express their own genders and their own sexualities. Then the next question is a genre you've been loving or reading the most? I've read about 30 nonfiction books so I still have been reading more fiction and definitely at the beginning of the year I read a lot of fiction especially I was reading for some specific lists but my nonfiction reading picked up so much in like May and June and I'm hoping that it keeps up that way in July. So definitely nonfiction has been a favorite thing that I've been reading. One thing that hasn't been going as well is middle grade reading. I don't know what's really wrong with that and then finally another thing that's been going pretty well is graphic novels i've really been enjoying my graphic novels and graphic nonfiction that i've been reading this year the next question is new release you haven't read yet but want to oh i have so many for these things that have come out in like the last month and this month one of my most anticipated reads for the year is nsfw by isabel kaplan i've kind of taken this to be like my next millennial woman disaffected youth kind of read in the same vein of like luster exciting times normal people kinds of things like that that. From my understanding, it's someone that just landed an entry-level position in Hollywood at a TV network and it not really going how she anticipates that it's going to go and her life kind of being a mess as a result of that. It says it has dark humor and riveting commentary on the truth of starting out professionally. The result is a stunning portrait of what success costs in today's patriarchal world asking us, is it ever worth it? Another one that I just got that just came out is Welcome to Saint Hell and this is my trans teen and misadventure by Lewis Hancock. It says it takes readers on the hilarious, heartbreaking, and healing path he took to make it past trauma, confusion, hurts, and dubious fashion choices in order to become the man he was meant to be. I really like the art style in this one, and I feel like the past few queer graphic memoirs that I've been reading have been really sad. I'm looking for something a little bit different, and I think this one will hopefully really do that. So far, I read maybe like 12 pages, and it's it's really funny. I also am super excited about Me Skin Says by Kat Fajardo. I love the art inside and I'm hoping that I relate to it and I think it'll be a lovely time. I have a few more like swim team I'm really excited to read that I already shared with. I'm really excited to read book lovers. My audiobook for it is almost available. I'm really excited for another audiobook hold that I just got and it's for We Carry Their Bones. If you remember that book that came out, The Nickel Boys, and I tried to read that book and I just could not get into it. For me it was more like I wish we had a nonfiction story of this because it's a fictional story that takes inspiration from a real event that happened um, in Florida. The Dozier School 
reform school in Florida that operated for 111 years. So this book, We Carry Their Bones, is the nonfiction story of that. The next question is most anticipated release for the second half of the year. I don't really keep up with new releases in the sense of like, I'm looking forward to this four months from now. It's more like new releases that are coming out this month. That's kind of how I keep up with it. But one that I'm really excited about is Jeanette McCurdy's memoir. I have watched a lot of interviews from her and I listened to some of her podcasts as well. And I think she's just such a fascinating person. Basically, she was the breadwinner in her family and her mom kind of made her become an actress. And the very conflicted emotions that she has about her mother. Also, that title is... It's very provocative, so we'll see how that goes. I'm also really excited about Espe's new book. It's called The Pass. I don't know very much about it, but I'm interested to get into it because of how much I enjoyed The Parakeet. As I was editing this video, I realized that I forgot to mention this book that I'm really, really looking forward to and I already have on hold at the library, and that's Bliss Montage, which are a collection of stories from Ling Ma, who wrote Severance, that I loved reading. And it says, in Bliss Montage, Ling Ma brings us eight wildly different tales of people making their way through the madness and reality of our collective delusions, love and loneliness, connection and possession, friendship motherhood and the idea of home sounds super interesting and the cover I'm really really looking forward to this one for sure okay the next question is biggest disappointment I just wrapped up this book and I explained my disappointment but it's Mercy Street I thought that this book really was gonna go somewhere different and it's a book that's supposed to focus on you know the perspective of people that are surrounding this abortion clinic really only had one female character and then there were three other male characters who took up so much space in the book and really left me feeling frustrated because of their motives and their points of views especially one character was really really hard to read from who was basically like doxing the women that were seeking care at this abortion clinic why did i have to read that in a fiction book i don't know and then the other book that really disappointed me was scoundrel i have had issues with this author before so i was going into it with that idea of like mm, I've DNF'd her book before and I didn't really like it so I'm probably not gonna like this one but I wanted to give it another try because it sounded interesting and the first chapter like the introduction of the book really explained how true crime is evolving as a, a medium or the way of storytelling that now focuses so much more on victim stories that also focuses on how your race and your background your wealth impacts what kind of people go to prison and I was like yeah now let's take down this man who basically murdered someone and almost murdered someone else and used his his charm as a white man to get out of prison basically and instead what this book was was just looking into his life finding out more information about him from his early childhood until like he went to prison for the second time I feel like there wasn't an analysis in this book about how those intersecting things about his race and his class and his connections that he had how that affected his case I liked aspects of it but it was definitely not what I wanted out of it it really disappointed me next question is biggest surprise so let's lift up the spirit I think my biggest surprise was nobody's victim by Carrie Goldberg I read this book so quickly I was so invested. I was really compelled to keep listening. I wanted to keep doing more chores to keep listening and that's always a sign of a great book. This focuses on Carrie Goldberg's career as a lawyer as she looks into different cases that she's worked on that have to do with domestic violence and stalking, rape, harassment, how all of those things really intersect with the social media landscape and also the internet at large, really stomping out these trolls and to have them come to justice. The cases are so interesting to me, the kinds of things that she is fighting for, but also also because of her style, her voice, her narration, and how confident she was, how disciplined she was. She's just very fierce, and that was exactly the kind of thing that I needed in that moment. The next question is, favorite new author debut or new to you? My favorite new author is probably Benji Nate. I've read two books by him this year. They were both graphic novels. One is really more like a comics collection called Lorna, and then the other one is Hellphone, which is the first book in a new series. They are just very absurd, weird, dark humor, things that made me laugh out loud, and and definitely I would like to read more by Benji Nate as a result. The next question is newest favorite character. I have two. One is Mary Jane from Mary Jane by Jessica Anya Blau. I really loved Mary Jane and seeing how her world kind of changed as she is getting older. This is a coming of age novel that focuses the early 70s and she is basically babysitting a young girl as the young girl's father is treating this like rock and roll star and his wife and they're you know kind of tough marriage because of 
of the rock and roll stars substance abuse seeing kind of like how the psychiatrist and his wife have also their own complicated marriage you know from the outside looking in looks great everything looks great the rock and roll star and his wife look great but then as she gets to know them more she starts to understand that like adults don't have it all mary jane starts to see how her conservative mother's life compares to this more progressive life that is happening at this young girl's house and starts to decide for herself like who it is that she wants to be her like impending maturity came through really well in the audiobook i could really feel her mind was kind of like expanding and her ideas about life and herself were changing and then i also really enjoyed addy and a kind of sparked by ellie mcnichol just because of how much she stood up for herself and how much she did not let people around her make her fit into this box of what a an autistic girl should be like she was a very very strong-willed character definitely my favorite middle grade character that i've read from this year the next question is books that made you cry no books have made me cry cry but some books have made me sad and tear up or kind of feel upset and emotional and i have three one is red white and whole by rajani la roca which i read towards the beginning of the year this is a really really emotional soft sad melancholy book and this focuses on a young girl who is seeing her mother's health kind of falter while also trying to live her life in the 80s and be a tween girl as well another book that really made me sad was seeing ghosts by cat chow mostly the things that made me sad about this memoir was the relationship between the father and cat chow in the story and how much that compared to like how i saw myself in my father so that's kind of where the emotion came for me her father had very particular ideas about success in america and didn't really let anyone stop him and he always like found a way even though sometimes they were very questionable ways the last one that made me sad was one that i read recently and that's between two kingdoms by Suleika yawad this is a book that focuses on the author's cancer diagnosis and how she lived through all of that it's something that she's still currently dealing with today i just found this book very very vulnerable the author let herself be as open and raw as possible i really value that in memoirs the next question is books that made you happy i have two books for this one the first one is the 2000s made me gay by grace perry it's a book of essays that i read earlier in the year focused all on culture and media that happened in the mid to late 2000s some of the things that were in there just called back to my own childhood so that's what made me happy about it is the nostalgic element of it but definitely the focus on that with her own identity and then the second book that made me happy is maybe maybe marisol rainey by aaron Antrada kelly this book made me really happy because of the main character she is so quirky and funny and sweet and i just smiled a lot reading this book because the perspective of this young young girl i think is something that we can all relate to the next question is most beautiful book i picked a beautiful graphic novel the golden hour by nikki smith i really love the colors in this i love the illustration style in this book it's definitely a beautiful book when it comes to the way that it looks but also the story is very very beautiful as well a young boy dealing with ptsd from a gun violence event that happened at his school and then last but not least the last question is what books do you need to read by the end of the year all of the books that i mentioned earlier are ones that i definitely want to read the ones on my july tbr are all ones that i need to read but there is maybe a couple more that i've gotten since i made my last video that maybe you haven't seen we'll see i have trailed one woman's quest to solve the shenandoah murders by katherine miles i'm interested to see what i think of this one i also have house cat trouble by mason dickerson look at the illustrations in here they are just adorable and also kind of like intense and then the last one that i got i'm not sure i have not heard anyone talk about this book but i saw it on the shelves and i was interested because of the people who were writing blurbs on the back including ruman alam ki Sleiman, young yoon angie kim and steph cha some authors that i've read and some authors that i've tried to read before and who i feel like write very tough gritty hard books this is supposed to be a chilling and blisteringly relevant literary novel of social horror centered around a brutal killing that takes place in a full contact haunted escape room but it's a provocative exploration of capitalism hate politics racial fetishism and our obsession with fear as entertainment i don't know like that sounds kind of up my alley but i also read some reviews that were kind of displeased with how it followed through with all of those ideas i'm not sure if i'm going to read this book but the cover really spoke to me and then all those people on the back really spoke to me and then 
like what it's about spoke to me. Have any of you read this book? I have not heard anyone talk about this book on booktube. I didn't even know it existed until yesterday. Those are some books that I would like to read. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. If you read any of these books or would like to read any of them, please let me know down below. Also, leave me an emoji of your favorite season of the year. It's way too hot here and I would like it to end already, even though I was really looking forward to summer when it was winter. Maybe my favorite would be spring or fall. And I will see you in my next one. Bye-bye.